If you need to update your deck, go to 50cards.shop. Get 5% off your next purchase when you use code NEXUS. All right, this is our friend Chris. They're going to go ahead and talk about their Gravidia deck and how they got up to top eight with their team. Hey, wait, hold on. Top eight. Yeah. All right, Chris, go ahead and start your deck profile. Yeah. Hello, everybody. I'm Chris, and I'm going to talk about this uh, Gravidia Nordlinger deck. Uh, specifically, it is a Gravidia World deck. Um, so uh, what this means is that in this right line, I'm using uh, Standard Starter. I'm using Routus, which helps me find any world that I want in the deck. Um, then I play the grade two that benefits from playing a world and gives whatever I want 5k and then finally I ride into Gravidia. Um, so in case you're unfamiliar with what Gravidia does, you know, when she swings she's able to drop these things called meteorites from the order zone, um, put them into the drop zone and gets benefits depending on how many you put down. Um, the best benefit is the fact that you're able to get um, plus 15k a crit and all of your trigger effects activate twice. It's really, really funny. So that being said, of course, I'm running four of them, <laughs> of course, with the right line. Um, because Persona riding in Gravity is actually really, really good. Um, you also do use a lot of soul, so you do want to constantly be riding because you're going to be using a lot of soul because of... This next grade three, Gravidia Bakubirito. Um, what Bakubirito does is when she's placed, she's Soul Blast one, um, and she puts any meteorite from your drop zone into your order zone. And basically what this does is this helps you recycle the grade one meteors, because as we'll talk about later, um, you can't really do that with the grade two meteors, um, but you can definitely do it with the grade ones. And considering that the grade ones also have an additional benefit, um, that is also very helpful. You're gonna want to keep this one around as long as possible. So then we have uh, three grade two um, units called Gravidia Stanner. And what Stanner does is if you have a total of five or more um, set orders between your drop zone and your order zone, um, she gets plus 5k power and plus 5k shield. And what this actually allows you to do is this actually allows you to kind of keep a very defensive presence on board because your opponent can't really swing into it very easily. It's a base 15k um, when you have the conditions met on your opponent's turn. And then if you decide to intercept or guard with it, it gets plus 5k shield. So in effect, it's almost like having um, another 10k guard, which is always pretty beneficial. Um, especially if you're running the plus uh, 5k front triggers. Um, next thing I run is two um, Gravidia Shergas. And what Shergo does is she returns your meteors to the deck um, and helps you, like, and not only gains power from it. Huh? <laughs> it's only upside down for you, sweetie, but for them. <laughs> <laughs> My apologies. <laughs> um, so, Gravidia Shogo, she returns meteorites to the deck. Um, and this has a twofold of A, gaining up to 15,000 power, but it also helps you not deck out in longer games. And believe me when I say, if you think Gravidia is going to go extremely fast, it's not. Um, especially against um, decks like Seraph Snow, where your decks will, what I say, where your games will kind of go into like turn six seven eight and they constantly ride pure lights repeatedly you're you're gonna want to keep these on deck because it's really hard not to deck out in this deck um the next thing i run are three gravidia wells um and what's interesting about this card i actually run this card for two reasons one, because it lets you put two meteorites from your hand into your order zone. And this is actually extremely important because you can only play one order um, per turn from hand. So this actually lets you cheat out two more. So you can actually have three orders in hand and play every single one of them without having to worry too much about it. And not to mention, if you manage to ride into Gravidia, 
on a Persona Right Turn, you can just go ahead and, you know, do like um, generate two more meteorites. So you're at the five meteors, you know, required to get the um, multiple trigger effects thing to happen. Um, but the other reason why I run this is because a lot of times um, the opponent really does know how to play against, you know, calling out Shadow Army tokens using the uh, Grade 2 order that we'll be talking about. Just don't forget them on your death list. Huh? Oh. This is the G2. What? <laughs> it's apparently a Shadow Token issue. Yeah, you know what? Token issue. No, we'll, we'll talk about that later. Anyway, so, um, as I was saying, so a lot of times what will happen is they'll know how to play against it. And what you're going to want to do is you're actually going to want to ride this from hand, especially if you're playing against Sarah Snow, where they constantly take things out of your hand. You want to be able to just not have to discard things in order to get what you need. And you may even have, you know, some extra discard room. Um, top seven, find any number of meteorites when placed on Vanguard Circle, add them to your hand. Um, is really powerful, especially for a deck that, you know, as you'll see, runs less than the allowed amount of meteorites um, in the deck. So you definitely want to find them early so you don't damage them, um, and you can just kind of swing face at your opponent um, frequently and not have to worry too much about running out of steam. Um, and also, you know... I, I found a lot of success by writing wells. Um, so specifically, you know, when I had games where I rode wells instead of Rudis, those are the games that I won the most. Um, so definitely keep that in mind. And then uh, next we're going to talk about these four PGs. Obviously, I'm going to run four PGs. I don't know why you wouldn't. Um, they're really good. <laughs> they stop you from dying once, especially if you, you know, get hit by an OT. Self-explanatory. Um, trigger lineup. Um, I run three of the plus uh, 5k front triggers because 20k shield is good no matter what format you're in. Um, I run uh, Patrol Robo. Um, Decker, uh, Decker Cop. Because A, Gravidian needs a lot of soul. Um, and sometimes you don't want to soul charge from deck. Because you can either soul charge your meteors that you need, you can soul charge very valuable triggers, um, or you simply just don't want to run out of deck. So this is actually really, really good uh, for building the soul that you need without having to really worry too much about anything um, and having to worry about your soul blast cost or whatever. The only time I really want to say be careful is when you're, again, up against Seraph Pure Light because she binds, or sorry, she imprisons from soul. So you want to actually limit how much your opponent can take away from you. And sometimes you just don't even really need the soul. Um, so you don't want to give your opponent unnecessary ammo to work with. Um, so it's just kind of a judgment call at any given point. Um, then we have uh, four more crits. You know, vanilla crits. It crit good, especially when you are able to proc them twice. Because swinging for six damage on any given occasion is really busted. Um, four heals, because I don't know why you would not run four heals. They're really good. Um, just getting self explanatory. And then, of course, we're not running the um, Cray Elemental, um, which we'll call it, Over Trigger. We're running Elder Breath because Gravidia takes advantage of this by being able to duplicate the effect. So instead of swinging for two damage when you hit this, actually swinging for eight because two times two times two is eight. And it's really, really good. And you're also able to pass this effect on to everything else, um, like Baka Birito, where, you know, if you're swinging, like if you're able to, you know, retire three, and you swing, she has a crit, so she's able to swing, you know, also for uh, eight damage, and, you know, you have a very threatening field. So I have no idea why, you know, you would really run the Cray Elemental um, over trigger unless you, unless you know you just 
can't afford it at any given point, which I mean is fine. Um, yeah, it does help out a lot with, um, you know, in case your opponent hits over triggers or whatever, get over it. Um, now, let's talk about the interesting part, the orders. So, the orders um, I run are Eclipse Moonlight. I run one of these because I'm just going to fight him with Radis. Doesn't really matter. Um, if I draw into it, um, it's an excuse to look through my deck, <laughs> you know. So, I mean, it's fine. Um, it also helps with a lot of early game pressure, especially if your opponent um, commits too early. Or if they... Or, or if you just want to, you know, push cards out of their hand. Um, pushing cards out of the hand, especially in Gravidia, is very important. Because you don't want your opponent to be able to have too much to guard against your Gravidia turns. Um, especially since you're going to be oftentimes hitting that 5 Meteorite benchmark. Um, and you want to be able to limit how much they're able to stop you from killing them. So, basically, the idea behind this is that you're able to kind of whittle down their hand early on um, and put them in, and back them into a corner, especially in a format where early defense is a significant boon to your strategy. Um, next, you have Four of Falling Hellhazard. Um, this card specifically says, you know, when it's removed from the order zone for the cost of your ability, you can count it as two. So this actually helps Gravidia because, you know, you can just do some cheeky combo of like two of these and one of these to get the five. And then in exchange, you have to bind it. And then each one of these retires something. And, um... Honestly, it's just really helpful to have. And then plus, it's, you know, it's a grade two um, order. So you can just kind of, like, if you don't have the world in your hand, you can actually just go ahead and play it during your um, Cubesia turn and, you know, call it a day. Um, it does help to kind of play your orders early um, because they're not going to be able to do anything about it anyway. So you might as well just kind of get them out of your hand. Um... Then finally, I play six Neatness Meteor Showers. Um, so Neatness Meteor Shower, um, if you're not familiar, is when it's removed from the order zone, you're able to retire um, one of your opponent's rear guards for each one of these drops. Um, so what's really good about this is that you can actually run 16 of these in a deck. Um, I have no idea why you would run 16 when you have so many other cards you need to run in the deck. But um, I've been finding that 6 to about maybe 10, if you're playing a pure Gravidia build, um, should be enough to, you know, keep your momentum. Um, I might actually start testing with anywhere between 6 and 8. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. I've been finding some success with 6. Um, because I'm able to find them, um, I'm able to get them back into the order zone, um, using, you know, my Baku Rito and other means. Um, I don't really have a problem, you know, trying to find these and, you know, maintain their presence on the board. Um, so yeah. And then, you know, you keep one of these in your deck, the, uh, Shadow Army token, because if you don't have them, you get DQ'd. <laughs> if you try to play it, if you try to play the Grade 2 Order and you don't have this and you try to do something else, you will get DQ. Please, please just have this on hand. Um, so yes, this was a deck list for um, Gravidia World specifically. Um, hope you enjoyed and uh, feel free to uh, post any questions you might have in the comments. Oh, Richard, we have a new problem.